The prayer of approach is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray together. God of starry nights and angel-filled visions, God of all mystery and wonder, you are continually opening our eyes to the miracle of new life in our midst. As you still the night and call the shepherds down from the hills, still us and call us in from the night, from our holiday festivities and all that would keep us from focusing on you. Lead us to the barnyard place where we meet the newborn infant Jesus who is born among us. We come this evening carrying in our hearts our greatest hopes and deepest longings, our fears and our anxieties. Be with us now, we pray. Bring joy to our celebration and peace to our lives. Amen. This year has been the first time in many years that I've had the opportunity to watch a Charlie Brown's Christmas. Staying with my sister and brother-in-law, it must have been a Virginia game because I was home alone and I watched this wonderful children's story. A story that touches on the over-commercialization and secularization of Christmas a story that is appropriate for all years, reminding us of the true meaning of Christmas. I love to hear Linus reciting those words from Luke's gospel, and I invite you tonight to hear these beautiful words with fresh ears and open hearts. The birth of Jesus according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
To you is born this day a Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus is the gift of Christmas, a Savior. As we gather on this night, I wonder if we believe that we need a Savior. Isaiah's people knew that they needed a Savior. And what about each of us tonight? Has that been part of your preparation, part of your planning, part of your thought process? The gift of a Savior? I pray that on this night, in the holiness of this night, the Spirit of God will enable each of us to know our need still today for a Savior. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, the most needed gift of all ages. Now, I don't know about you, but through the years, I've received many, many gifts. I think it's about three years ago, I'm not really sure. My husband and I received this beautiful digital picture frame. I think it was about three years ago. This December, the digital picture frame still stands in our bedroom in the box up against the wall. It's a great gift. It's a thoughtful gift. It's a generous gift. It was useful still sitting in the box. We like it. We appreciate it. We're not quite sure exactly what to do with it. We're a little bit afraid of it, maybe. So we haven't used it yet. Is that what you've done with the gift that God gave you for Christmas? Is it still in a box? Is it put away somewhere because you're not quite sure what to do with it and you're a little bit afraid of of opening it. There's another gift that someone in my family received years ago. My son, who was a new father, received this gift as a child. We call it his blankie. (laughs) He's 30 now and would be mortified to know that I'm showing you this tonight. But he loved it. He took it with him everywhere he went. This blanket gave him comfort. It gave him security. It made him feel loved. Is that what you've done with the gift that God gave you at Christmas? When someone gives a gift, they want you to like it. They want you to use it. When God gives you a gift, He wants you to use it. One of the incredible blessings of being a pastor is you get to share in the faith journey with people. You get to share in the highest moments of their lives and in the deepest sorrows of their lives. For me, it's perhaps odd that one of the things I enjoy the most about ministry is funerals because it is such a holy privilege to celebrate the life of a child of God and how God has interacted in their lives. It's just a holy privilege. It's great, especially if you've had time toward the end to have a special visit and a special prayer with them. You feel blessed or comforted, and the family does as well. Several times in my ministry, I've been summoned by family to go to the deathbed of a loved one who has decided at this near-death moment that they want to receive the gift of Christmas, that they want to invite Jesus into their heart for the first time. Now, I need to tell you, that is awesome when that happens. It's such a huge celebration for the family. But it's also, I think, very sad. It's sad because this person may have lived their entire life without knowing the blessing of growing in a relationship with the Lord. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Not just eternal life after death. It's about embracing the holiness of the presence of God and living 
every day, each moment, abundant life, full life, that's deep and joyful and meaningful. Seeing God in each moment, seeing God in each person, seeing God in each situation. You see, the fullness of the gift that is offered to us continues to grow and grow. Sandy Patty sings a song called, The Father Gave the Son, The Son Gave the Spirit. The Spirit gives us life so we can give the gift of love. And the gift goes on. And the gift goes on. Whether this is your first Christmas Eve, the first time of receive the gift, or you've been here 80 or 90 times, the gift can grow. Tonight, once again, we read those words from Luke's gospel. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. In a little while, we're going to sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Receive. I want you to focus on receiving tonight. Most of us have been taught over and over in our lives that it's better to give than to receive. That's good. We are created in the image of God to give. It is our God-given ability and nature to give. But I believe that if we do not first receive from God, we have nothing of value to give. Sue Monk Kidd tells about being at a monastery before Christmas praying and and meeting one of the monks crossing the grounds. And she said to him, Merry Christmas. And he responded to her in a way that was shocking. He said, May Christ be born in you. May Christ be born in you. Receiving the gift, using the gift that God gives, not leaving it in the box. I've got some good news. Our daughter-in-law came and got this and looked at it, and she has whatever those things are you need to put the pictures on and put in here, and this is coming out of the box this week. We are going to start using this wonderful gift, finally. When someone gives you a gift, they want you to love it and they want you to use it. God has given each of us a gift. He wants us to love it. He wants us to use it. In a Christmas prayer, the Arkansas Bishop Gary Mueller wrote these beautiful words. This Christmas, may the Christ child be born in our hearts. Maybe for the first time, Maybe in a brand new way. Maybe for the first time in a long time. This Christmas, help us experience the reality of your love. A gift so unconditional, it loves us just the way we are. A gift so transformational, it just can't leave us that way. A gift so powerful, nothing can ever separate us from you. This Christmas, empower us to follow Jesus in all we do. As we share his love every day, as we do with all of our quirky imperfections, as we act in ways that amaze even us. But most of all, Lord, revive us this Christmas, now, every day, and for all eternity. Tonight, in the holiness of the night that the gift was given, can we be still for a moment and aware of God's presence within us and all around us? You see, the only genuine response to this holy night to receiving the gift that our God gives to us on this night is to fall on our knees.